Howdy gamers, welcome. Recently, or more like three months ago, a streamer I watch dropped an interesting question during one of her streams. Madness seems kind of nutty. Madness build? Does anybody actually... I took it as a challenge and asked her if she'd like to give me a set of rules for this run, since I love Frenzy Incantation and Madness in general in this game. And basically she told me that Frenzy Incantations or weapons within a Frenzy buildup would work. I thought that might be an interesting challenge, so I went for it, after beating the DLC. Before I jump in, I'd like to add some rules to the run as well. I can only deal damage with Frenzy Incantations, Frenzy Weapons and my Seals. Shields are allowed for the special effects, like the Icon Shield for its passive HP regen, for example. Consumables are allowed to be used to buff myself and not to deal damage to the enemies. At least one boss has to be defeated by hitting them with my catalyst. Just for a fun little bonus challenge. And there's no level cap. With all that being said, let's get into the run, shall we? Oh, and drop a like if you liked, leave a comment, and subscribe. Or perish. I wanted to recreate her, at the time, VTuber model. Look, I play video games. Do you really think I know what a woman looks like? I also gave her a mustache. Women have stashes, right? I took a wretch as my starting class and took the lands between rune as keepsake for a little rune head start. Firstly, I went to the Calibatismal Church for our first incantation of this run, the Flame of Frenzy. This incantation requires 16 faith to be used, which is why I took the lands between rune. After acquiring the incantation, I visited Margit and promptly jumped off a cliff. This unlocks the round table hold, where I can buy our first seal, the finger seal. Because I like armor, my frenzy bar builds up really fast. After three uncharged or two fully charged flame of frenzies, I go cuckoo crazy. Which makes me lose some HP and some FP, but that didn't stop me from trying to fight Margit. And it went as well as you'd expect it to go. It didn't. I went to the Stormfoot Catacombs to see how much work this build needs, and, well, I didn't have enough FP to beat the boss, so I punched it to death. So the build needs some work. I went to Kaelid for the right half of the Dactus Medallion and did some horribly inefficient leveling. Sold some items to get my first piece of gear, which gives me a solid 38 focus. Focus, in case you don't know, determines how much crazy I can do before going cuckoo crazy. So having a lot of it might be a good idea. It also helps with sleep. After getting my hands on the right half of the medallion, I took the left half as well. I also visited Fort Gale, where flame grant me strength. I later got 42,000 runes from this friendly knight who kindly jumped off a cliff to give them to me. Tried fighting Margit again, died, so I went to Liurnia to get some more toys to play with. Got Hall of Shabriri and got Frenzied Burst. And finally, Margit goes down, thanks to Frenzied Burst. So, Stormville Castle. I zoomed to Godric's Fogwall, but didn't feel like fighting Godric yet. So I went and tried getting Vike's War Spear, a great spear with innate madness buildup. I didn't have enough stats to wield it yet, but it was mainly used to gather runes 
I picked the spiral horn shield, farmed some needed physic tiers, mainly the fire shrouding tier, the faith knot tier, and the cerulean hidden tier. And now, Godric the Golden. I probably could have just killed him first before doing all of this, because, wow, he was easy. With Godric's defeat, I needed to get a second great rune to gain access to Leandel. I tried Radon, but Jesus Christ, the charge up on my incantations is what usually kills me on this fight. So I eventually set for Renala, since she's not as aggressive as Radon. And thus, I set course to the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. I put down the Red Wolf of Radagon, made Moongram go cuckoo crazy, tried fighting Renala, died, and set on getting the Fire Scorpion charm. After acquiring Golden Vow and the Earth Tree Seal, I tried looking for a Somber 7, which, in case you don't know, in a newer run, this is one of the more annoying things to get early on. You can get Somber 8 and 9 in Kaelid, and a Somber Dragonstone in Mogwin Palace. But the Somber 7 is one of the more annoying things to get your hands on. I decided to fight Renala again after fighting her second stage for 5 long minutes. She finally goes down, giving me a second great rune, allowing me to gain access to Leandel. Let's have some fun with him. I tried cheesing him by making him drop off the cliff. There's one more in Fara Missoula, I'll beat that one with Frenzy, but I really wanted to do something funny to this one. Leandel. I went to the West Capital Rampart side of Grace and went to the sewers, where I finally found two Somber Sevens, allowing me to max out my seal and get my Great Spear to plus 9. I made it to the Forsaken Depths and made my way back up to Leandel, where I faced Goldfree who died pretty easily since he has decided to walk to me instead of run. After Gold Free, I went and got the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Gold Free Icon and the Faithful Talisman. I fought Morgoth, whom I thought would be another roadblock like Renala, but I kind of got lucky and he just walked and gave plenty of opportunity to beam him to death. Hey, Melina, you do realize I use Frenzy incantations exclusively, right? After Morgoth's defeat, I went to the Forsaken Depths and beat Suermo. I did use my Great Spear for this one, since he has an absurd amount of fire resistance, being at 80%. The mountaintop of giants. I collected the last sacred tears and went to the fire giant. Also, why is its fire resistance 50%? I just don't get it. It uses fire, has fire in its name, so you'd expect it to have more fire resistance, right? Moke has 80% fire resistance. This decrease in fire resistance is very welcome though, since the fire giant was the biggest challenge of this run and I don't know how much longer it would have taken me if it had 80% like Moggy the Poggy. I was horribly unprepared. 
So I went on a golden seed hunt until I had max flasks, beat Commander Nile and even went after Unendurable Frenzy. It took me a long, long time, but eventually he falls. I am so glad he is 50% fire resistance. sacrificed Melina since she was the only one preventing me to embrace chaos. She would be very angry if I did, so she had to go. And now with her out of the picture, I embraced the three fingers and inherited the flame of frenzy. I made my way to the crumbling far of Missoula, where I immediately went to the Godskin duel. With their defeat, I beelined towards the Draconic Tree Sentinel. I promised I'd beat it with Frenzy Incantations. The Draconic Tree Sentinel was really annoying the fight, so I came up with cheese. And then it just teleported away and didn't regain its health. So, Malakath, I employed my hidden weapon, Iron Jar Aromatic. From the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved for strength and certainty of steel. Leyendel has turned to ash, and Gideon got grabbed. I'm, um, really dumb, and I've no idea how to insta-kill him with inescapable frenzy. I tried my best, but three grabs is what did the trick. Still, it felt very appropriate for the run that I'd kill him with the funny yellow flame grab. I also learned to set up my talisman to heart swap them, since I was 100% certain I wouldn't be able to stay at full health for Godfrey. And now Godfrey. I honestly thought that this fight would suck, especially with Horolu, but this was the most fun fight in the run, oddly enough. Godfrey didn't really need practice, <laughs> I wonder why. Horolu did require some practice though, since I'm used to monkey mash my way through his fight, I had to study his moveset carefully and look for proper openings. After careful dodging and timing my bursts, Horolu has been put to rest. I don't know what I did before the rest of the footage, the audio seems kind of off, but eh, not a big deal I guess. I tried beating Radigan normally, I did it eventually, but I save a lot of flasks if I just walk menacingly towards him.
I'm also glad Torrent can be summoned in the Elden Beast fight. This makes the fight a lot more fun. And I can use the Lance Talisman as well. You still need to get off Torrent for his Holy Wave Slash attacks. I just can't believe that an incantation you can find early in the game can deal damage this high. Anyways, a couple of attempts go by and eventually the beast has been defeated. And now I can make the world a more bright and happy place. Just look at this happy little sun I made. I bet everyone's gonna love this. But anyways, be sure to go to Nagis as her Twitch. She challenged me to do this, kind of. And I'm glad I took the challenge. Thanks for watching, gamers.